When he crashed the car, his blood alcohol content was 0.18, more than two times the legal limit. My strategy of car ownership is to buy the worst examples of the coolest cars. And I've been very public about that. If you talk to John Tamarian or John Ficari, they'll say that you should buy the nicest car that you can afford. And that is not at all the right way to do it. When you buy the worst car, it's actually a lot easier than it should be to get it for far less than the next cheapest car. But it's also pretty easy, if you sell it the right way, to get just a little bit less than the cheapest car. I have made a lot of money doing this, and it also gives you liberty to just drive them as much as you want, put all the miles on, never worry about anything, which is my favorite way to own and enjoy an exotic car. And so I bought a lot of Lamborghinis in exactly this predicament. And in fact, I think my favorite one is the Grigio Telesto Canadian Market manual LP640 that was crashed by a drunk 15-year-old who's being made to drive the car by his drug-dealing boss, who was also the father of the girl he'd just gotten pregnant, and he was a Canadian car dealer because he was no longer longer allowed to be in Iran because he was kicked out of there for being a terrorist and blowing up bazaars. And if I had known that when they abandoned that car and then fraudulently reported it stolen in the middle of a Toronto highway crash, I didn't know the whole story when I sold it. I just knew that little bit. And I, I don't think I could have let it go if I knew that the car had such a crazy, crazy story. I've actually tried a couple times to buy that car back because the story got worse. So I actually love it when the story got worse. But there have been a couple other cars that I currently and have owned that I learned a little bit more about recently. So as I talked about, I accidentally bought another manual LP640 on Cars and Bids a few weeks ago. And I went up to Brooklyn, New York to pick the car up and I drove it back literally less than 24 hours before I got on a plane to go to Car Week and then went on the Sway adventure up to Alaska. But that car was owned by a guy named Ray who was a member of a large car club in New York City and in the New Jersey area called the Driving Force Club. Now, years prior, I knew that there were some photos of my black LP640 Roadster in Driving Force Club Instagram posts. And so I talked to some of the guys that had done their events. There's a guy named Hovick that organizes a lot of them. And it's kind of disbanded at this point. A lot of these guys have gotten older, a little bit more responsible. But these were some proper insane drives that they used to go on. And I knew years ago that the roughest example of a manual LP640 Roadster was this Driving Force Club car. In going up there, meeting Ray in person, even though I've known him for several years because he owned the Monterey Blue one of one manual LP640 coupe in the US, I got to know him a little more and he told me about some of these Driving Force Club events. And in fact, the accident that totaled my red Lamborghini Murcielago LP67 DSV was on a Driving Force Club drive. It was in fact one that Ray had not attended because they, uh, I guess he was busy that day or whatever. But you also have to understand that these drives were happening 10, 15 years ago at a time when Lamborghini owners were less normal. Prior to now, they were much more rare, much more obscure, and they were generally owned by much stranger people. So you go back to Muras and Countach's, almost all of the owners were ridiculous gold chain wearing pet alligator kind of guys. Now it's just me in that kind of circumstance. But so as Lamborghini owners have gotten more normal, people forget that they all lived really, really crazy lives. And so the guy who in fact crashed the Red SV was really distraught about it. He's kind of replicated that car in rebodying SV style an LP640 and uh, actually I think they were the ones that might have taken the seats in the rear wing and all the th and the badges and things that complicated my ownership a little bit of this car but also were the reason why I eventually found access to it and so uh, one of them maybe tried to sell me back the parts they had taken off of the car a couple of years ago but regardless it was interesting to know that that's exactly when it happened. Now the more interesting story is about the Black Roadster. So I have a Nero Nemesis 2009 manual transmission LP640 Roadster, one of 10 US cars, one of 16 worldwide, one of two identical cars that was ordered new by Ralph Lauren, and he did not take delivery of either of them. So one was sold through Lamborghini St. Louis. It is now owned by the billionaire in Seattle that also owns the Verda Ithaca 08 manual LP640 that I owned in 2014 and made a bunch of money to buy the gray Iranian terrorist drug dealer car. So he has those two and several other manual LP640s sitting in his garage. The one that I have 
since it was not sold through Manhattan Motor Cars to Ralph Lauren, it was sold to just a guy in New Jersey who was a member of this driving force club. The only thing he could say kind of while we were in the car, he's like, I heard that that guy was some big scammer. I'll find the article. At that moment, I'm really just trying to get on the road, start driving south. I've got a long way to get home and a short time to get there before I have to get back. A few hours later, I get a text message of a screenshot of an article from a New York newspaper. And the headline is essentially that a scam artist had conned a mentally ill elderly person into buying him a $480,000 Lamborghini that he had then crashed while drunk and was at that point not paying the body shop that had repaired the car. Now, of the 10 cars that are US manual LP640 Roadsters, only one has a salvage title. It's a flood title car. I've tried to buy it many times. I sold it as a pre-owned car at one point. But this is, I really have the worst one. And that was because it also has two accidents on the Carfax. Now, the custom that I understood in buying this car of its original owner that still had it when I got it was that if you would get into an accident, you would file an insurance claim and use the money to buy cheap aftermarket panels and pocket the rest of the money. And if it didn't kind of amount to enough to file a claim, he would just carry a, around a can of black Rust-Oleum spray paint and just spray paint over the damages. So to this day, almost all of the panels have circles of matte black spray paint on top of matte black factory paint that I have now covered in matte black vinyl to make it look presentable enough for me to drive. Because that's really all I care about. I don't mind all the error lights on and things that it has. I just want to drive this example of my favorite car. And I really do love the Roadster. I get to sit up straight, look out over the windshield, and let the bugs hit me in the face. It's just a, it's a lovely experience, and I love the car. The accidents that I knew about are on Carfax from 2016 and 2017. I bought the car late in 2021. It actually went through five different dealers that chose not to keep this car. There's a rumor that RM just sold one for literally 10 times what I paid for this car less than two years ago. So anyway, I got a great deal. Everybody else passed on it. We got it through John Tamari and it curated. He was one of the people that got called as it was being wholesaled around. And so I love it. I don't really see any world in which I would have sold it before, but now I know I can't sell it because this just gets even crazier. Because as you read the article, apparently this guy was a contractor and he would scam elderly people into like buying expensive cabinets or something like that. And then he would sell them inexpensive cabinets or whatever. And he was making a lot of money. And at some point he made somebody pay for this car for him. So I believe that it was actually being sold finally because it was like a judgment in some lawsuit or something like that. And this was reported by a body shop owner who had had the car from like 2011 to 2013. So another accident for $250,000, he was stiffing this guy for the bill. So the body shop owner had complained to the newspaper that his unpaid bill was the responsibility of this scam artist. I guess he's the one who let the cat out of the bag about how the car had originally been acquired and what the story of the car had been. Now, apparently, when he crashed the car, his blood alcohol content was 0.18, more than two times the legal limit. You're not gonna get very far. The 15-year-old that crashed my grade car didn't get very far that drunk, and this guy, also did not, but $250,000 is a tremendous amount of damage that at that time would have totaled the vehicle, but of course, when you crash a car drunk, your insurance company does not pay. So he was on the hook to pay for it personally. I assume he never did. That did not result in the car changing ownership. I don't know how it got settled. All I know is the story of the car got crazier, which means I like it even more. At the end of the day today, it drives really well. You know, it's definitely had a bunch of panels off and it's, you know, not the tightest Lamborghini that I've had, but it's rare, it's awesome, it's fast, it makes good noises and uh, I can sit up straight. For a limited time, Glosset's best ever DIY ceramic coating deal is back. Last year, too many of you ordered it and it broke his sight for a little while. But now, just the first 2,000 of you can get Glosset's $150 bottle of graphene ceramic coating for just $69.99 and you get a free $50 bottle of their ceramic detail spray, which makes the application a breeze. So click right now at the link in the description below to get yours.